Good afternoon boys, good afternoon boys uh, out here with me now, good afternoon boys if you're in your classrooms and staff and also can I extend a very warm invitation to our parents who have joined us online. Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon's I think special for a number of reasons. First of all, this is the first time in a very long time that we've been able to have a larger group of boys together from different classes safely in the same area uh, to celebrate first speaking. This is a hugely important event for us and one of the blue ribboned events in the academic life of the school. The idea of oratory is deeply embedded in the life of a Jesuit school. Um, as many of you already know, the heritage of Jesuit education goes back over 450 years. And when those schools were first started in Italy, the Jesuits had a new vision for education. They wanted to take uh, what was a well-established uh, model of um, philosophy and, uh, and, and particularly grammar and they wanted to offer their students something more. They wanted to develop their sense of oratory, to be able to speak intelligently, to be able to listen intelligently and compassionately. So boys, anyone involved in the verse speaking over the course of this year is actually involved in 450 years of tradition. And I've got some boys with me this evening or this afternoon who are going to be performing in that final but it's really important to remember that verse speaking at St John's isn't defined necessarily by the final, but by the fact that every single boy in the school from Bellum and upwards learns a poem from heart. And in the 21st century, we're obsessed with nanotechnology. We're obsessed with the ability to be able to take things around that are portable. And it strikes me that poetry is the ultimate in nanotechnology. It's certainly is a very good way to communicate. But boys, for those of us who learn poetry, I'm, I'm considerably older than you, but I remember distinctly when I took part in, in uh, poems, uh, poetry recitals at school, and I can still remember those poems and the ability to remember great literature and to recall it at will without having to go www dot, just to be able to recall it and recite it and understand the power of it is something that will stand us in hugely good stead. And it's arguably one of life's greatest riches. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you enjoy this afternoon. Um, certainly the middle school uh, verse speaking was, was hugely enjoyable and incredibly good standard. I do want to thank Mr Gibbons and Miss Conway and all of the English department for the work that they've put in to make this possible, both in preparing the boys uh, for their recitals, but also just the hard work that's necessary to bring an event like this to place and also a particularly warm welcome, uh, whilst he isn't physically here with me, it's a pleasure to welcome Mr David Lee, the Head of English at Stonyhurst College, who is going to be adjudicating the awards later on. So without further ado, Mr Gibbons, thank you very much indeed for your on. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Good afternoon, heads, masters, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vion Sedani and I will be reciting A Psalm of Life by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Tell me not, in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream, for the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not what they seem. Life is real, life is earnest, and the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art, to dust returnest, was not spoken of the soul. Not enjoyment and not sorrow is our destined end or way, but to act that each tomorrow find us further than today. Art is long and time is fleeting, and our hearts though stout and brave, still like muffled drums are beating, funeral marches to the grave. In the world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac of life, be not like dumb driven cattle, be a hero in the strife. Trust no future, however pleasant, let the dead pass bury its dead, act Act in the living present, heart within and God overhead. Lives of great men, all reminders, we can make our lives sublime. And departing, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints of perhaps another, sailing over life's solemn main. A forlorn and shipwrecked brother, seeing shall take heart again. Let us then be up and doing, with a heart for any fate. Still achieving, still pursuing, learn to labour and to wait. Good afternoon, headmaster and boys, ladies and gentlemen.
My name is Axel and I'll be reciting Sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dim. And every fair, fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest. Nor shall death brag thou wanderest in the shade, when an eternal line to time thou goest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Good morning headmaster, teachers and boys. My name is Joshua Collicott and I will be reciting The End by unknown author. New ways to communicate, some have to self-isolate, men expressing their views although they've not seen the news. Stockpiling made the shelves empty, the toilet roll rice all in greeny, food banks running out of stock, in shop people run amok. Prime Minister speaks to us daily, nothing's clear, all sounds like maybe. The weather outside is so fine, stay inside, stay home, or be fine. Case numbers rise every day, will it ever go away? A cough, fever, short of breath, could result in your untimely death. It is easy to focus on all that is bad, the worry, the loneliness, what we could have had. If you look a bit closer, you'll see, people are not mentioned on the BBC. Retired NHS staff, turning to work, getting paid, but there are no perks. Communities helping come together, it is doubtful the spirits will last forever. Key workers are risking their lives and lives of their parents, husbands and wives. But some people don't like to follow rules, they socialise touch and any law they refuse. Try to stay at beat or at least pretend. Take up a hobby with all your time spent. This year has been hard to comprehend. We're all just waiting for the end. Good afternoon, headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joshua Liddon and I will be reciting Sir Isaac Newton Told Us Why by Adam Author. Sir Isaac Newton told us why an apple falls down from the sky. And from this fact, it's very plain, all other objects do the same. A brick, a bolt, a bar, a cup, invariably fall down or up. And every common working tool is governed by the same same rule. So when you handle tools up there, let your watchword be take care. If at work you drop a spanner, it travels in a downwards manner. At work, a fifth of accidents or more illustrate on Newton's law. But one thing he forgot to add, the damage won't be half as bad if you're wearing the proper clothes, especially on your head and toes. These hats and shoes are here to save the wearer from an early grave. So best feet forward and take care about the kind of shoes you wear. It's better to be sure than dead, so get to hat and te keep your head. Don't think to go without his brave, for the effects of gravity can be grave. Good evening, headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alexander McNish and I will be reciting A Red Red Rose by Robert Burns. Oh, my love is like a red red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love is like the melody that's sweetly played in tune. So fair art thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I, and I will love thee still, my dear, till at the seas gang dry. Till at the seas gang dry, my dear, and the rocks melt with the sun, and I will love thee still, my dear, while the sands of life shall run. And further wheel, my only love, and further wheel while. And I will come again, my love, though it were ten thousand miles.
Good afternoon, Headmaster, boys, ladies, and gentlemen. My name is Dylan Kufariji, and I will recite Ode by Arthur O'Shaughnessy. We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams, wandering by lone sea breakers, and sitting by desolate streams. World losers and world forsakers, upon whom the pale moon gleams, yet we are the movers and shakers of the world forever, it seems. With wonderful deathless ditties, we build up the world's great cities, and out of a fabulous story, we fashion an empire's glory. One man with a dream of pleasure shall go forth and conquer a crown, and three with a new song's measure can trample an empire down. We, in the ages lying, in the buried past of the earth, build me never with our sigh, and Babel itself with our mirth, and o'er through them with prophesizing to the old of the new world's worth. For each age is a dream that is dying, or one that is coming to birth. Good afternoon, Headmaster, ladies and gentlemen, and boys. My name is Felix Liddell, and I'll be reciting The Pig by Rodolph. In England once there lived a big, and wonderfully clever pig. To everybody it was plain that piggy had a massive brain. He worked out sums inside his head, there was no book he hadn't read. He knew what made an aeroplane fly, he knew how engines worked and why. He knew all this, but in the end, one question drove him round the bend. He simply couldn't puzzle out what life was really all about. What was the reason for his birth? Why was he placed upon this earth? His giant brain went round and round. Alas, no answer could be found. Till suddenly one wondrous night, all in a flash he saw the light. He leapt up like a ballet dancer and yelled, By gum, I've got the answer. They want my bacon slice by slice to sell at a tremendous price. They want my tender juicy chops to put in all the butcher shops. They want my pork to make a roast. That's the part that costs the most. They want my sausages and strings. They even want my titulings. The butcher's shop, the carving knife. That is the reason for my life. Such thoughts as these are not designed to give pig great peace of mind. Next morning in comes Farmer Bland, a pail of pig's wool in his hand, and Piggy with a mighty roar bashes the farmer to the floor. Now comes the rather grisly bit, so let's not make too much of it, except that you must understand that Piggy did eat Farmer Bland. He ate him up from head to toe, chewing the pieces nice and slow. It took an hour to reach the feet because there was so much to eat. And when he finished, Pig, of course, for absolutely no remorse. He slowly scratched his brainy head. With a little smile, he said, I had a fairly powerful hunch that he might have me for his lunch. And so, because I feared the worst, I thought I'd better eat him first. Good afternoon, Headmaster, ladies and gentlemen, and boys. My name is Alexander Le Chong, and I'll be reciting Touching the Sky by Shreya Chatri. Come for me, sweet tomorrow, help me touch the sky. Like a well-learned bird opens its wings, I too want to fly high. Don't let the darkness of yesterday blind my vision to evolve. Coming out of the bitterness of the past, help me let my flaws absolve. Make me like a rainbow, the colours mingle together, but all of them in show. Help me discover my hidden talents, and pull myself together with efforts gallant. Let me be a beacon of goodness for the people I meet, and let me hear the music of life, and follow every beat. Come for me, sweet tomorrow, help me touch the sky. 
Like a well-learned bird opens its wings, I, too, want to fly high. Good afternoon, Headmaster, ladies and gentlemen and boys. My name is Ashin, my name is Ashin Hay, and today I'll be reciting The Minister for Exams by Brian Patton. When I was a child, I sat an exam. This test was so simple, there was no way I could fail. Question one, describe the taste of the moon. It tastes like creation, I wrote. It has the flavor of starlight. Question two, what is the color of love? Love is the color of the water a man lost in the desert finds, I wrote. Question three, how do snowflakes melt? They melt because they fall onto the warm tongue of God. There are more questions, they were as simple. I wrote, I wrote down the grief of Adam when he was expelled from Eden. I wrote down the exact weight of an elephant's dream. Yet today, many years later, for a living, I sweep the streets or clean up toilets of fat hotels. Why? Because constantly I failed my exams. Why? Well, let me set you a test. Question one, how large is a child's imagination? Question two, how shallow is the soul for the Mr. of exams? Good afternoon, Headmaster, ladies and gentlemen, and boys. My name is Freddie Robinson, and I'll be reciting The Revenge by Alfred Lord Tennyson. At Floors, in the Azores, Sir Richard Grenville lay, when a pinnace, like a fluttered bird, came flying from far away. Spanish ships of war at sea, we have sighted fifty-three. Then swear Lord Thomas Howard, for God I am no coward, but I cannot meet them here, for my ships are out of gear, and half my men are sick. I must fly, but follow quick. We are six ships of the line, can we fight with fifty-three? Then spake Sir Richard Grenville, I know you are no coward. You'd fly them for a moment to fight with them again. But I've ninety men and more that are lying sick ashore. I should call myself the coward if I left them, my Lord Howard, to these inquisition dogs and deviledoms of Spain. So Lord Howard passed away with five ships of war that day till he melted like a cloud in the silent summer heaven. And Sir Richard bore in hand all the sick men from the land, very carefully and slow, men of Biddeford from Devon, and we laid them on the ballast down below. For he brought them all aboard, and they blessed him in their pain, that they were not left to Spain, for the thumb screw and the stake, for the glory of the Lord, he had only a hundred seamen to work the ship and fight as he sailed away from Flores till the Spaniard came in sight with her huge sea castles heaving upon the weather bow. Shall we fight or shall we fly? Good Sir Richard, tell us now, for to fight is but to die. There'll be little of us left by the time the sun is set. And Sir Richard said again, we are all good Englishmen. Let us bang these dogs of Seville, the children of the devil, for I'd never turn my back upon the don nor devil yet. Sir Richard spoke, and he laughed, and we roared a hurrah, and so the little revenge ran on sheer into the heart of the foe, with a hundred fighters on deck and ninety sick below. For half their fleet to the right, and half to the left was seen. The little revenge ran on through the long sea lane between. And while now their great San Felipe hung above us like a cloud, whence the thunderbolt will fall, long and loud. Four galleons drew away from the Spanish fleet that day, and two upon the larboard, and two upon the starboard lay, and the battle thunder broke from them all. And the sun went down, and the stars came out far over the summer sea, 
but never a moment ceased in the fight of the one and the fifty-three. Ship after ship, the whole night long, their high-built galleons came. Ship after ship, the whole night long, with her battle thunder and flame. Ship after ship, the whole night long drew back in her dead and her shame. For some were sunk, and many were shattered, and so could fight us no more. God of battles, was ever a battle like this in the world before? For he said, fight on, fight on, though his vessel was all but a wreck. And in chance that, when half of the short summer night was gone, with a grisly wound to be dressed, he had left the deck. But a bullet struck him, dressing it suddenly dead. And himself he was wounded again in the side and the head. For though he said, fight on, fight on. And we had not fought them in vain, but in perilous plight were we seeing forty of our poor hundred were slain, and half of the rest of us maimed for life in the crash of the cannonades and the desperate strife. And the sick men down in the hold were most of them stark and cold, and the pikes were all broken, all bent, and the powder was all of it spent, and the masts and the rigging were lying over the sides, but Sir Richard cried in his English pride, We have fought such a fight for a day and a night as may never be fought again. We have won great glory, my men. And a day, less or more, a sea or a shore, we die. Does it matter when? Sink me the ship, Master Gunner. Sink her, split her in twain. Fall into the hands of God, not into the hands of Spain. And the gunner said, aye, aye, but the seamen made reply, we have children, we have wives, and the Lord hath spared our lives. We will make the Spaniard promise, if we yield, to let us go. We will live to fight again and to strike another blow. And the lion lay there, dying, and they yielded to the foe. And the stately Spanish men to their flagship bore him then, and they laid him by the mast. Old Sir Richard caught at last, and they blessed him to his face with their courtly foreign grace. But he rose upon their decks, and he cried, I have fought for queen and faith as a valiant man, and true, I have only done my duty as a man is bound to do. With a joyful spirit, I, Sir Richard Grenville, die. And he fell upon their decks, and he died. Good afternoon, Headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Isha Sandu, and today I'll be reciting All the World's a Stage by William Shakespeare from As You Like It. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. At first the infant, mewling and puking into the nurse's arms. Then the whining schoolboy, the satchel and shining morning face, creeping like a snail and willing then a lover, sighing at the furnace with a woeful ballad, made to his mistress's eyebrow. Then a soldier, with a strange oath, and bearded like the pard, jealous in honour, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking a bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice, in fair round belly, with good cape and line, with eyes severe and beard a formal cut, full of wise sores and modern instances. And so he plays his part. The six days shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pout on side. His useful hose well saved for a world too wide. For a shrunk shank and big, manly voice, turning again towards childish treble, pipes and whistles in a sound. 
The last scene of all that ends a strange, eventful history. A second childishness, a mere oblivion. Sun's teeth, sun's eyes, sun's taste, sun's everything. Good afternoon, headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin and I will be reciting The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveller, long I stood, and looked down one as looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the underworld. Then took the other as just as fell, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted well. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really hard. And both that morning, equally late, leave no step had trod blood. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way away, I doubt so much ever. I shall be telling with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took one less trouble. Master, ladies and gentlemen and boys. My name is Bailey and I'm going to be reciting Have a Nice Day by Spike Milligan. Help, help, said a man, I'm drowning. Hang on, said a man from the shore. Help, help, I'm not drowning. Yes, I know, I heard it before. Be patient, the man who is drowning. You see, I've got a disease. I'm waiting for Dr. Dave Browning. So do be patient, please. How long, said the man who is drowning. Will it take for the doctor to arrive? Not very long, said the man with disease. Till then, try staying alive. Oh dear, said the man who is drowning. I think I'm going to die. Farewell, said the man who was drowning, so the man with disease could fly. So the man who was drowning drowned, and the man with disease passed away. But apart from that, and a fire in my flat, it's been a very nice day. Good afternoon, headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Luca Mosson, and I'll be reciting Metro Corbo. Mettre corbeau sur un arbre perché, tenez en son bec un fromage. Mettre renard par l'odeur léché, lui teint à peu près ce langage. Eh, bonjour, monsieur du corbeau, que vous êtes joli, que vous me semblez beau. Sans mentir, si votre hamar se rapporte à votre plumage, vous êtes le phénix des hôtes de ces bois. À ces mots, le corbeau ne se sent pas de joie. Et pour mon sa belle voix, il ouvre un large bec, laisse tomber sa proie. Le renard s'en saisit et dit Mon bon monsieur, apprenez que tout flatteur vit au dépens de celui qui le Cette leçon vaut bien un fromage, sans doute. Le corbeau, honteux et confus, jura, mais un peu tard, qu'on ne lui prendrait plus. Now I will do the English translation of the, the crow and the fox. Master Crow, perched on a tree, was holding a cheese in his beak. Master Fox, lured by the smell, said something like this. Well, hello Mr. Fo Mr. Crow. How pretty you are. How beautiful you seem to me. I'm not lying. If your voice is like your plume, you are the phoenix of all the inhabitants of these woods. At these words, the crow is overjoyed. And, to show off his beautiful voice, he opens his beak wide and leads his prey to fall. The fox snatches it and says, My good man, learn that every flatterer lives at the expense of the one who listens to him. This lesson, without doubt, is well worth achieving. The crow, embarrassed and ashamed, swore that a little late that he would not be taken again.
afternoon, headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tommy Maddock Jones, and today I'll be reciting Rugby, a game played by men by Joe Cole. Keep your American football, helmets, and body armour. Rugby is a game for men. Bang on the head, a bleeding wound, 10 minutes off the pitch. Six stitches and a bandage, and the rugby player resumes. Take the hit, take the pain, the tackle must be made. The shattered bones, just part of life, worth the yardage game. Yes, I've had the broken bones, and the stitches in my head. I had the very worst, because in a tackle, I broke my neck. But it never did deter me from the game that I so loved. I remember all those times shaking hands when smeared with blood. Yes, rugby's a game for men, a game where pain's the norm. A game for modern nights, a game where men are found. Good afternoon, headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tom and I'll be reciting All the World to Stage by William Shakespeare. All the world to stage and all the men and women, merely players. They are the exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. His acts being of seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. And then the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like a snail, unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow. And then the soldier, full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard, jealous in honour, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice, in fair round belly, with good cape and line, Eye severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise saws and modern instances. And so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippery pantaloon. His spectacles on nose and pouch on side, his youthful hose, well saved, the world too wide, from a shrunk shank, and his big, manly voice turning once again to charge treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all. Then to strange, eventful history, the second childishness, a mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. Good afternoon, headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Enrique and I will be reciting Sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day, thou art more lovely and more temperate? Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's leaves hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dim. And every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course and trimmed. But thou eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest. Nor shall that brag thou wantest in a shade, when in eternal lines to time thou goest. So long as men can breathe, and I can see, so long as this, and this gives life to thee. Good afternoon, headmaster, boys, ladies, and gentlemen. Today I'll be uh, my name's Sydney Scott, and today I'll be reciting "Hot Food" by Michael Rosen. We sit down to eat, and the potatoes are a bit hot, so I only put a little bit on my fork, and I blow till it's cool, just cool, then into the mouth. Noise. But there's my mu and there's my brother. He's doing the same till it's cool just cool then into the mouth <laughs> noise and there's my mum she's doing the same till it's cool just cool then into the mouth <laughs> noise but my dad my dad what does he do he stuffs a great big chunk of potato into his mouth and that really does it his eyes pop out he flaps his hands he blows he gobs he yells and he bobs his head up and down and spits bits of potato all over his plate and then he turns to us and goes 
Watch out everyone, the potato's really hot. Good afternoon, headmaster, ladies and gentlemen, and boys. My name is Rufus Gould, and today I'll be reciting King Lear, Act 2, Scene 3, by William Shakespeare. I heard myself proclaimed, and by the happy hollow of a tree, escape the hunt. No port is free, no place, that guard the most unusual vigilance, does not attempt my taking. Whilst I may escape, I will preserve myself, and am bethought to take the basest and most purest shape that ever penury in contempt of man. Brought near to beast, my face I'll grind with filth, blanket my loins, of all my hair and knots, and with presented nakedness, I'll face the winds and persecutions of the sky. This country gives me proof and precedence of bedlam beggars who, with roaring voices, strike in their numbed and mortified bare arms, pins, wooden pricks, nails, sprigs of rosemary, and with this object from low farms, poor pelting villages, sheep coats and mills, sometimes with lunatic bands, sometimes with prayers force their charity. Poor Tiley God, poor Tom, that's something yet. Yeah. Edgar, I, nothing am. Good afternoon, headmaster, headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joseph Clark and today I'll be performing A Fallen Soldier by Brandon Hidalgo. Fallen soldier, all alone. Fallen soldier, far from home. Trickling down his face, a tear. Forgetting how it feels to fear. Death and all its fate and glory. Now it's here, no need to worry. Fallen soldier, all alone. Fallen soldier, far from home. He's one of those you'll all forget. The life he lived, the goals he set. The ones he loved, the ones who wait to see his nearly forgotten face. Fallen soldier, all alone. Fallen soldier, far from home. Now breathing, just a waste of breath, and living, just a waste of death. As he searches for a new address, a brand new home, free of loneliness. Fallen soldier, all alone. Fallen soldier, far from home. Lying motionless on the ground, the battle raging all around. For now he's not alone. The fallen soldier is welcomed home. Good afternoon, Headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tom Barnes and I shall be reciting Once More Unto the Breach, Dear Friends by William Shakespeare. Once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more, we'll close up the wall with our English dead. In peace, there's nothing, so becomes man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews and summon up the blood. Disguise fair nature with hard favoured rage. Then lend the eye a terrible aspect. Let pry through the portrait of the head like the brass cannon. Let the brow overwhelm it as fearfully as doth a gold rock. Overhang and jutty his confounded face, swilled with the wild and wasteful ocean. Now set the teeth and stretch the nostril wide. Hold hard your breath and bend up every spirit to his full height. On, on you noblest English, whose blood is fed from fathers of warproof. Fathers that, like so many Alexanders, have in these parts from morn to leave fought and sheathed their swords for lack of argument. Dishonour not your mothers. Now, attest that those whom you call fathers did beget you. Be copy now to men of grosser blood and teach them how to war. And you, Good yeoman, whose limbs were made in England, show us here the metal of your pasture. Let us swear that you are worth your breeding, which I doubt not, for there is none of you so mean and base which hath not noble lustre in your eyes. I see you, stand like greyhounds in the slip. Gains afoot, follow your spirit, and upon this charge, cry God for Harry, England, and St George. Good afternoon, Headmaster, 
ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eric Boulet, and I'll be reciting the Gettysburg Address by Abraham Lincoln. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot not dedicate, we cannot not consecrate, we cannot not hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who fought here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, no longer remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us the living to be dedicated here to the great task remaining before us, that from these honoured dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain and that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, the master and boys. My name is Anna Hussain and I'll be reciting Death is Nothing at All by Henry Scott Holland. Death is nothing at all. It does not count. I've only slipped away into the next room. Nothing has happened. Everything remains exactly as it was. I am I and you are you. And the old life that we live so fondly together remains untouched, unchanged. Whatever we were to each other, that we are still. Call me by the old familiar name. Speak of me in the easy way which you always used. Put no difference in your tone. When I forced air, solemnity, or sorrow. Laugh as we always laugh at the little jokes that we enjoyed together. Pray, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name be ever the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without an effort, without the ghost of a shadow upon it. Life means all that it ever meant. It is the same as it ever was. There is an absolute and unbroken continuity. What is this death but a negligible accident? Why should I be out of mind because I'm out of sight? I am but waiting for you. For an interval somewhere very near, just around the corner. Nothing is hurt, nothing is lost. One brief moment and all will be as it was before. I wish a laugh at the trouble of parting when we meet again. Headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen, my name is George Busworth and I will be reciting None Today Thank You by Spike Milligan. The convent rang with explosions of day, as none of the nun was exploded away. Something really must be done to an unexploded nun. With such a very fragile exterior, we'll have to armour the Mother Superior. So Mother Fabian was covered in steel and they asked her, Mother, how does it feel? She whispered as she lit a taper, heavier but much, much safer. But against the odds of cruel fate, she exploded that night at 10 to 8. All over the church her bits were scattered. She was gone, and that's what mattered. Said so Sister O'Brien, Dad and me gab, must have been an inside job. Who would want to explode a nun? It wasn't there, I dear it fun. The mystery was solved by Sister Murray. Of course this week we've been eating curry. So peace and quiet return to the cloisters, but no more curry, Guinness and oysters. Good afternoon, headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dylan Clash and I'll be reciting the poem 
sun hill by Dylan Thomas. Now, as I was young and easy under the apple boughs, about the lilting house and happy as the grass was green, the night above the dingle starry, time let me hail and climb, golden in the heydays of his eyes, and honoured among wagons, for I was prince of the apple towns, and once below a time I lordly had the trees and leaves, trailed with daisies and barley, down the rivers of the windfall light. As I was green and carefree, famous among the barns, about the happy yard and singing as the farm was home. In the sun that is young once only, time let me play and be golden in the mercy of his means. And green and golden, for I was huntsman and herdsman. The calves sang to my horns and the foxes on the hills barked clear and cold. And the Sabbath rang slowly down the pebbles of the holy stream. All the sun long it was running, it was lovely, the hayfield as high as the house, the tunes from the chimneys, it was air and playing lovely, and watery, and fire green as grass. And nightly under the simple stars, as I rode off to sleep, the owls were bearing the farm away. All the moon long I heard, blessed among stables, the night jars flying with the ricks and the horses flashing into the dark. And then to awake, like a wanderer white with the dew come back, the cock on his shoulder, it was all shining, it was Adam and Maiden. The sky gathered again and the sun drew round that very day, so it must have been after the birth of the simple light. In the first spinning place, the spellbound horses walking warm out of the whinnying green stables onto the fields of praise. Good afternoon, Headmaster, uh, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Thomas Lynn and I'll be reciting Hot Food by Michael Rosen. We sit down to eat and the potato is a bit hot. So I only put a little bit of fork on my fork and I blow till it's cool, just cool, and into the mouth. <sighs> nice. And there's my brother, he's doing the same. Till it's cool, just cool, and into the mouth. <laughs> nice. And there's my mum, she's doing the same. Till it's cool, just cool, and into the mouth. Nice. But my dad, my dad, what does he do? He stuffs a great big chunk of potato in his mouth, and that really does it. His eyes pop out, he flaps his hands, he bobs his head backwards of force, he screams and yells. He puts pieces of potatoes onto the plate, and he goes to the top, and he faces us. And he says, watch out everybody, the potato is really hot. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, headmaster and boys. My name is Mara, and I will be reciting I Have a Dream by Martin Luther King. I have a dream that this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. I have a dream that on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slaveholders will be able to sit down together at the table of bread. I have a dream that in the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be ta transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they be not judged by the colour of their skin or by the content of their character. I have a dream to the good. I have a dream that right down in Alabama, with this vicious racist, with this governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, that one day, right in town in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands with little white girl boys and little white girls, as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that every valley shall be exalted, every hill made low, every crooked place be made straight, and every rough place be made plain. 
and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it. This is our hope. This is the faith that I will go back to the south with. With this faith we will be able to hew out the mountain of despair and the stone of hope. With this faith we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into an oasis of freedom and justice. With this faith we will be able to eat together, work together, struggle together, pray together, go to jail together and fight for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. Good afternoon, Headmasters, boys, ladies and gentlemen. Today, my name is Artem Philick and today I'm going to be performing A Dream Within a Dream by Edgar Allan Poe. Take this kiss upon the brow, and in parting from you now, thus much let me avow. You are not wrong who deem that my days have been a dream. Yet, if hope has flown away, in a night or in a day, in a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? All that we see or see is but a dream within a dream. I stand amid the roar of a surf tormented shore and hold within my hand grains of the golden sand. Yet how few, yet how they creep through my fingers to the deep. While I weep, while I weep, O oh God, can I not grasp them with a tighter clasp? O oh God, can I not save one from that pitiless wave? All that we see or see is but a dream within a dream. Good afternoon, Headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marcus Day and today I'll be reciting Dreamland by Edgar Allan Poe. By a route obscure and lonely, haunted by ill angels only, or an eidolon named Night, when a black throne reigns upright. I have reached these lands but newly, from an ultimate dim fury, from a wild, weird climb that lies sublime, out of space, out of time. Bottomless vales and boundless floods, and chasms and caves and titan woods, with forms that no man can discover, for the tears that drip all over, mountains toppling evermore into seas without a shore, seas that restlessly aspire, surging into skies of fire, lakes that endlessly outspread their lonely waters, lone and dead their still waters, still and chilly with the snows of the Roman lily, by the lakes that thus outspread their lone waters, lone and dead their sad waters, sad and chilly with the snows of the Roman lily, by the mountains near the river, murmuring lowly, murmuring ever. By the grey woods, by the swamp where the toad and the noose encamp. By the dismal tarns and pools where dwell the groups. By each spot the most unholy, in each nook most melancholy. There the traveller meets aghast, sheeted memories of the past. Shrouded forms that start and sigh as they pass that wanderer by. White robed forms of friends long given in agony the earth and heaven. For the heart whose woes are legion is a peaceful, soothing region. For the spirit who walks in shadow, tis an, oh, tis an El Dorado. But the traveller, travelling through it, may not, dare not openly view it. <laughs> so wills its king, and hath forbid the uplifting of its fringed lid. And so the sad soul who through here passes, beholds it through darkened glasses. By a route obscure and lonely, haunted by ill angels only, where an eidolon named Night on a black throne reigns upright. I have wandered home but newly from this ultimate dim fury. Okay, well, that brings the senior section to a conclusion. I'm just going to confer with our adjudicator. Neil, can you uh, come? And just to entertain the masses here, uh, Neil first, the rest of you know the order. <laughs> this is here with you. <laughs> Ladies and 
ladies and gentlemen, it's going to take uh, five or so minutes for Mr. Gibbons to adjudicate with Mr. Lee. So in the meantime, we've got some boys just to entertain you in that intervening time. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and headmaster and boys. My name is Neil, and today I'll be reciting Why English is So Hard by Anonymous. We'll begin with a box. The plural is boxes. But the plural of ox becomes oxen, not oxes. One vowel is a goose, but two are called geese. Yet the plural of moose should never be meese. You may find a lone mouse or a nest full of mice. Yet the plural of house becomes houses, not heist. The plural of man is men. Why shouldn't the plural of pan become pen? If I speak of my foot and I show you my feet, and I give you a boot, would a pair be called a beat? If one is a tooth and a whole set of teeth, why shouldn't the plural of booth be called beef? Then one may be that, and three would be those, yet hat in the plural should never be hose. And the plural of cat is cats, not coes. We speak of a brother and also a brethren, but though we say mother, we never say methren. Then the masculine pronouns are he, his, and him. But imagine the feminine, she, shiz, shim. Master and boys, today, today I'm going to recite some Herbert Glerbert by Jack Prelotsky. Herbert Glerbert, rather round, swallowed sherbet by the pound. Fifty pounds of lemon sherbet went inside of Herbert Glerbert. With that glob inside his lap, Herbert Glerbert took a nap. As he slept, the boy dissolved, and from that mess a thing evolved. A thing that was a ghastly green, a thing the world had never seen. A messy thing, a gooey pile of something green that did not smile. Now if you're wise, and if you're sly, you'll swiftly pass this creature by. It is no longer Herbert Glerbert. Whatever it is, do not disturb it. Good afternoon, Headmaster, ladies, gentlemen and boys. My name is Zach Miles, and I'll be reciting Courage that I wrote myself. Courage is a source of strength that feeds the soul and takes it many lengths. Once you gain it, you'll never lack, and having infinite control, it'll always be on your back. The use is endless, the possibilities so great. It leads you down powerful paths and carries you up to heaven's gate. Courage is a sensation that prohibits frustration. It allows innovation and enlightened celebration. With peace in your heart, it always gives the very best start, shielded with love from high up above. So keep your tears at bay, for you'll never stray. Go out into the crowd, and you'll always have your way. Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, headmaster and boys. My name is James, and I'm going to be reciting Water by Michael Rosen. Water is what he puts with everything else to, well, make it not taste like water. Then, people say, you get hard and soft water. I personally think it's all soft. Then it can get very cold, turn hard, that's ice. Then it can get very hot and you get steam in the bathroom. I like it best though, with salt in the sea. Though snow is good too. Good afternoon, headmaster, ladies and gentlemen, and boys. My name is Sean Byrne and I will be reciting My Job by Unknown Author. I love my job, I love the pay, I love it more and more each day. I love my boss, he's the best, I love his boss and all the rest. I love my office and its location, I hate to have to go on vacation. I love my furniture, drab and grey, and piles of paper that grow each day. I love to work among my peers, I love their leers and jeers and snares. 
I think my job is really swell. There's nothing else I love so well. I love my computer and its software. I hug it often, though it doesn't care. I love each program and every file. I'd love it even more if it worked a while. And those friendly men who've come today in clean white coats to come take me away. Good afternoon, headmaster, ladies and gentlemen, and boys. My name is Luke Barry, and I will be performing Henry VIII by Anonymous. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. This is how they ended their lives, but all were Henry VIII's six wives. Old Catherine's brain was number one. She tried so very hard to give Henry a son. When this failed and she started to age, Henry's emotions had from sadness to rage. He started to plan a possible divorce, but had to ask the Pope's permission, of course. The Pope declared no to the split, but this didn't stop Henry, not one little bit. He made himself the boss of a new religion and asked himself for special permission. Of course the voice of Lord Catherine was granted. On to wife number two, he excitedly chanted. Good afternoon, headmaster, ladies and gentlemen, and boys. My name is Jacob and I'll be reciting I Hated Everyone Today by John Whitworth. I hated everyone today. I took a boat and sailed away. I found an island in the sea. There was nobody there but me. It had a little wooden hut, a plum tree and a coconut. I walked along the silver shore and met a red and blue macaw. Tells he told of pirate's gold, of brigigantes and Spanish gold, of Captain Blood and Captain Kidd and all the jokes and news they did. They plundered, pillaged, off his plate and he's not even heard of the welfare state. When teacher talks he won't hear a word and he shoots down. His bell Timothy Winters has bloody feet and he lives in a house on Sewer Street. He sleeps in a sack on the kitchen floor and they say there aren't boys like him anymore. Old man Winters likes his beer and his missus ran off with a bombardier. Grandma sits in a grate with a gin and Timothy's dozed with an aspirin. The welfare worker lies awake but the law's as tricky as a temper snake. So Timothy drinks his cup and slowly goes on growing up. At morning prayer the master helps the children less fortunate than ourselves. And the loudest response in the room is when Timothy Winters roars Amen. So come one angel, come on ten. Timothy Winters says Amen. Amen, 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 Amen. Timothy Winters, Lord, Amen. Good afternoon, Headmaster, boys, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Noah Buttle and I'll be reciting The Super Bowl by unknown author. The stands are full of eager fans who say we're paid too much money, but if they would put on our suits, they'd find football isn't funny. 22 men, five referees, chasing a pigskin airfield ball, mashing and bashing all the way until their striped shirts was the record. 
All the generals on the sideline are waging their athletic war, and the letters in the words they use never amount to more than four. There's no substitute for winning and no excuse for losing. Though after games when we can't sleep at night is because of all the bruising. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Faisal Fularin, and today I will be reciting a self written poem titled A Reader. I'm a reader, not just any reader, a mind reader. I can sense a narrative or a story just by concentrating purely. People call me weird, a breed that's rare, but it's what I like to do, so I don't care. I'm a reader, not just any reader. A mind reader. A lady walks past, looking rather confused. She's scared, she's jittery, simply not amused. She's wearing red, so perhaps she's on a date. Dressed quite boldly, however, showing a strong lack of interest. So she's on the hunt for something. Perhaps she's a spy, or more realistically, she's on the hunt for love, or this poor man's credit card. I'm a reader. Not just any reader, a mind reader. A man walks past with his veins bulging out of his head. He's sweating and invigorated with nerves. He's been fired. He's wearing a corporate suit, so perhaps he's a corporate lawyer, dreading disapproval from his expensive family, big spending wife and ungrateful children. I'm a reader, not just any reader, a mind reader. I can sense a narrative or a story, just by concentrating, purely. People call me all sorts, weird, a breed that's rare, but I tell them, it's what I like to do, so I do not care. Thank you everyone. Good afternoon boys. Headmaster, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Firas and today I'll be reciting Tiger Tiger by William Blake. Tiger Tiger, burning bright, in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye will frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distance, deeps or skies, burn the fire of thine eyes? On what wing dare he aspire, what the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart, and when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain? In what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp? Could terrors ted deadly terrors clasp? When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the land make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? Lord Tennyson's poem, uh, The Revenge, is Freddie Robinson. Well done. Well, Freddie. Thank you. Thank you. There you go, Freddie. Didn't do you any harm to abbreviate it, did it? There you go, old thing. Well done. Thank you, sir. I'll take it. Barnes <laughs> delivered this superbly, uh, I felt. Um, he was convincing as a as a leader. He brought out something in the in the text. I think he showed me. He showed us Henry V as a as a politician um, and a convincing one. Um, and we we could perhaps do with more of those. Um, so I think Tom Barnes, a man with an interesting, exciting future, <laughs> and um, first place in the seniors competition um, this year. So congratulations, Tom.
Well, Mr. Lee, thank you ever so much for joining us this evening. Uh, I don't envy your your task, and I think everyone here would have uh, would, would uh, wouldn't have wanted that task either. And you've done it wonderfully well, and thank you for your uh, your kind comments. Um, boys, I did want to say one last thing. Mr. Hutchinson also is taking a photograph of us at the moment with the drone, so it's rather hard to concentrate, but. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what I did also want to say is one of the hardest things to do is to stand up in front of people like this and not feel self-conscious. And one of the hardest times in life to be able to do that is when you're going through puberty. And what we need at St John's are men of integrity, but also of courage and intellect in order to want to be able to do this and set an example for the next generation. And this group of rudiments have had the hardest job to lead and show that example. In the days since they've been back, they've done it. In the days, in the days since they've come back, they've done it exceptionally well. The touches are not. Thank you. In the days since uh, they've come back, they've done it so well, and I think the best possible example we could have had is having 13 or 14 boys stand up here and do that quite exceptionally and pass the gauntlet to the next generation of boys. So rudiments for all of the boys that have learnt their poems and aren't in the final, but particularly for the boys standing here, you have done the most exceptional job, not just in your declamation, but in the example you're setting for young people. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed, boys. Thank you for joining us in class. Have a